On the 14th of January 2021, a travel ban on Brazil and a number of South American countries has been imposed by the government in a bid to stop the spread of yet another new coronavirus strain. In this video, I will be explaining some of the differences we see in this new Brazil variant of the coronavirus and what we have to do next. But before we begin, please first watch the video linked in the description. This will explain the science behind why and how viruses mutate. This Brazil variant features 12 mutations in a spike protein region. What this means is that some of the building blocks, i.e. amino acids, that make up the spike protein have been replaced by different amino acids, many of these being similar to the ones found in the already known variants, which I explain in the video linked in the description. For example, a common mutation observed in all of the variants detected to date is at the 501st amino acid position in the spike protein. Okay, so this specific mutation was associated with causing higher transmissibility between the population owing to the fact that it modestly enhances binding between the spike protein and the human ACE2 receptor. This spike ACE2 interaction is required for the virus to infect our cells. Fortunately, tests by Pfizer-BioNTech found that their vaccine can still successfully target coronaviruses harboring this N501Y mutation. However, this variant also harbors mutations in the 484 and 417 amino acid position of the spike protein. Alarmingly, scientists have suggested that coronaviruses pertaining this E484K mutation have the ability to bypass the immune system. A study published on the 6th of January highlighted the first case of reinfection from genetically distinct SARS-CoV-2 variant presenting the E484K spike mutation in Brazil a variant associated with escape from neutralizing antibodies. This particular person was a 45-year-old female, resident in northeast Brazil with no underlying health issues. She developed symptoms of viral infection on two occasions, May 2020 and October 2020. In the first episode, mild symptoms persisted for seven days. She went on to make a full recovery after 21 days. But on the second occasion, symptomatically, the situation was way more severe. The patient developed respiratory distress and shortness of breath. On both occasions, results of RT-PCR tests targeting three genes were positive for SARS-CoV-2 and genomic analysis of the viruses on both occasions of infections shows that in the second infection, the virus had the E484K mutation, suggesting that this is the mutation which gave the virus the ability to evade the neutralizing antibodies of the patient which she would have developed upon the first infection by SARS-CoV-2 in May. Some concerns have arised that this variant could possibly bypass the immunity that current vaccines provide. Now, scientists will need to test the genetic material of coronaviruses infecting patients to determine if they are infected with the variant. If so, attempts need to be made to contain this variant. The banning of inbound flights will prove to be pivotal in minimising the chances of this variant arriving in the UK and other nations. And finally, constant molecular surveillance of coronaviruses needs to take place so that scientists can make sure all available vaccines are still effective and if not, can develop antibody therapies and vaccines that can neutralise and provide immunity against these new variants that are constantly emerging in our people all across the globe.